Hello Lover friends, now that Reweb is finally out for you to use, it's a good idea to show you how to get started using it. In the last video I gave you a quick overview, but today we want to take a look at a real use case together. Let's go! So this will be the example of today's video, my order which I have placed just today, I ordered a Lamborghini of course, but this is the facade dish, not even Taylor has this one yet, so that's a special one. And it's a must have for every modern PHP developer, of course. So the status of my quarter order is currently just placed and there's processing, shipped and delivered. And if I change the status to, let's say, shipped, you can see that it changed here as well. But of course, this only happens now if I refresh the page. And of course, we want to make this working in real time. So that's the plan for today, make this work with Reverb in real time. But before, let's also take a look at how this current code works. So here in the view file, let's scroll down here where we're showing the status, we have this here. This is the timeline which we're showing, which currently is blue. And here with this variable progress bar width, we are defining the width. And this is how we're going to show you this blue bar here. And this is working with an Alpine component, which I have here, it's called progress bar. And by default, the width is just one and the current status is empty. And at the beginning in the init method here, I'm setting the current status, which I get through PHP, through the order model, which is being passed here to this model. And then I update the progress bar and here I'm just checking for those specific terms here. And then I'm setting the width of the bar. So pretty basic and straightforward. But now we want to make this in real time. So how are we going to do this? So first we're going to start by installing Reverb. So the best way to do this is by running PHP Artisan install broadcast. Because broadcasting is the level feature that we want to use here. We want to broadcast events from the back end to our front end. And this will also install Reverb for us. So by the way, we are getting asked about who want to use Reverb right away at first. Yes, we want to do. And now everything needed is being installed. And we also get asked about if we want to install the node dependencies, which we need, which is echo. And yeah, we want to do this as well here. Let's run this and all right. So a few things are happening here in the back, which we want to check out now together. Let's make this a little bigger here. So we have now a new broadcasting config file, which we have here and we have a reverb config file. That's the first thing that happened here. Then we have this new channels route route file, which we didn't have before because by default in level 11, they are not in the application, but now through the install command, we now have this too. Then here in our bootstrap app file, a new place where we're going to define our application and customize it. You can see here that we're now including this new route file and the other one which we have are already defined here. Also in this bootstrap GS file, we are now importing a new echo file, which was also added here, which is this one. And here is where we're going to set up echo. Echo again is the way on our front end how we communicate with our web server. And of course, in our environment file, we want to make sure that those free web settings are being set. So these are the ID, key and secret are just random keys that you can define, but which are needed as well. And then of course, inside our application, we need an event. And I have already created one, created one. This is called order shipment status update. So this is being thrown whenever the status of one of our orders has been changed. It receives the order and the status. And then here, most importantly, we are using the broadcast on method. So this means we want to broadcast this new event also um, for the front end through a new channel here. And the channels is called orders and then the ID of our order, which in our case is the ID of one. And of course, you also need to make sure that you implement the should broadcast interface. All right, at this point, we are good to just spin up our WebSocket server, PHP, Addison, Reverb, Start. And voila, here we have our WebSocket server. All right, of course, but there is also some stuff that we need to do on our front end. So let's get back to our product here. And here in our init method, we also want now to connect to the WebSocket server. 
And this is how we do this with Echo. We are using a specific channel and the channel name is orders.1 in our case, because one is the order which we have in our database. We only have one. Then we're listening for this specific event from our backend. And if we receive this event, we're going to use the status which we are providing as a public property in our event. And then we set this and then we run our update progress bar method again. But now we have the status in real time. So with this in place already, we can check if our connection from the front end to the WebSocket server is working. Let's show the dev tools. Let's go to network and then to our WebSocket server. And then we're going to refresh. Let's make this a little bigger here. And if we check out here the messages, we can see there was a subscribe event to our channel orders.1 and subscription succeeded. All right, so we are now successfully connected to the WebSocket server from the front end, which is great. But now, of course, we need to somehow trigger this event being dispatched in order that we see this here on our front end. In order to do this, I have prepared this artisan command order update status, which just receives a string. So this one here shipped, for example, or processing, and then it will change the status and it will dispatch an event. That's what I'm doing in this command here. So let's check again what's the current status of our Lamborghini. It's shipped. Let's change this now to being processed. Let's run here. We can see here this event was dispatched and we're receiving this data here with the status being processed. And if we make this a little bit smaller here, we can see now this has changed to be processing. But yeah, we want to see this now in real time. So let's bring this now together. So right on my left, I have now my IDE. And now I'm running this command again. Let's check again. We're currently at being processed. Let's maybe change this to delivered. And we now should see this in real time being changed. And it does with a nice animation. And now it seems like my Lamborghini is here. Now I can go outside and pick it up. Of course, if we change this now back to processing again, you can see this works as well with a nice backwards animation. But yeah, now this is real time because now we are connecting through the backend to our WebSocket server and then to the front end to um, our application here. And this works just super nice and smoothly. And look how cool this is for users to see this in real time. So one thing you might have noticed here that in our event, we are using a channel, which is a public channel. So this means everyone can listen to this channel with the right name. But actually for this case, what we really want to do is to want to use a private channel because you only want a specific user to access this channel and see the status update of my Lamborghini. So this means also on our front end, we need to change the code here to listen on a private channel now. The rest should stay the same. But if we refresh now, let's go to the network tab and to the HX calls, you can see here that we are here making a call to broadcasting auth. So we are trying to authenticate this request and we get a forbidden back. This is because we have not defined on the backend yet who is allowed to see this. So this means back on the backend in the new routes channels files, which was created through the broadcast installation command, we now need to define this. And this looks like this here, where we are defining a channel order start then the order ID. And we are getting here the user and the order ID. And then we're just making sure that the current user ID is also the one which belongs to the current order. All right, let's try this again. And you can see we still see a 403 forbidden because we are not locked in here. So let's change this, log into this application here as Christoph. And let's check this now again. And now you can see we get a 200 response back because I'm the correct user. And now authentication is now working. So this also should mean, let's run this again, change this to delivered. And you can see this is now working as well, but now also on a private channel where this should be. So I hope with this little demo, I could show you how simple it is to install and use VROP and the broadcasting features of Laravel in a very simple way and just the places where you would need this like here for this example. 
Of course, there is much more for Reverb for you to check out. So again, check out the docs for the installation process, but also for configuration. And yeah, there is a lot you can define here for which applications you want to use. SSL is also a big topic here with lots of information and debugging and much more. So please make sure to check out the official docs as well for rework, but also for broadcasting. And this, my friends, is how simple it is to get started now using WebSockets in your Level application with Level Reverb. We are really proud of this addition to our first party packages. Have you used it already? Please let me know about your use cases in the comments. Have fun. See you. Bye.